All right, more kettlebell information here. There's ways to use kettlebells to enhance power lifting. And I'm actually pretty curious about this, and this is a question that I've had before. Um, how can I use the kettlebells to sort of enhance power lifts? I know that, you know, that's something that we're really trying to ramp that CNS up and we're going to get to accelerate the weight. So how, what sort of a swing or what different techniques uh, are good to focus on to kind of enhance that? Sure, so if you're a current power lifter or let's say you're, you're interested in power lifting and you want to get started on it, power lifting obviously is the test of absolute strength of a lifter. So we're looking for a one rep max. Mm -hmm. Now even though someone's going as heavy as they can possibly go, any lifter who's lifted any serious weight knows you're never trying to move that weight slowly. So even no. though the bar may be moving slowly, you're trying to move that weight as fast as humanly possible. So what I want to discuss is how someone might be able to use a swing to assist their power lifts. Now, this stems from just uh, my own personal experience. Probably when I was, I think, about 19 years old, I was out at Westside Barbell training out there, and I was exposed to Louis Simmons' system, which, in my experience, is absolutely brilliant. So a lot of credit to Louis. What he's done over there is just amazing. Yeah. And in his system, which follows the conjugate method that he took from and, and kind of adapted from uh, Soviet weightlifting, Olympic weightlifting, there's really two main, uh, two primary elements. You've got max effort and you've got dynamic effort. Now, dynamic, we're looking at speed. Mm -hmm. So this, while you can use a hard style or a very hinge-based fast dynamic swing on your heavy day, this for me has perfect application to increasing the speed on your speed day. So let's say you're training the squat and the deadlift. On your speed day, I would use a hard style or a very dynamic type of swing. So I'm gonna demo it and then we'll break it down and we'll kind of talk about the correlations and the benefits. Okay, so real, you know, focus on that explosion there. I noticed too, like in really trying to get the hips involved to produce a lot of force in that movement. So that's mainly like the differentiating factor between hard style and uh, more of a kettlebell sport sort of energy conservation type swing. Right, so we're looking for maximum speed exactly on this type of movement. What we're also trying to do in that kind of, uh, on that topic is, we're looking to minimize the time or the, the point of transition between the lowering phase and the raising phase or essentially the eccentric, the concentric cycle. Okay. So that point, that transition point, the quicker that is, the more of essentially like a plyometric effect you get. Mm -hmm. So not only are we trying to get that explosive power from the end range and then back up. And it's but the recoil. It's the recoil. And what we're also doing is that we're loading the movement in such a way that it loads the posterior chain, right. which is exactly what a deadlift and primarily a squat is, especially if you're using more of a powerlifting squat, which tends to be wider, maybe toes pointed straight Because you're going to get more force the more grounded your feet are and the more connected you are. And so using your posterior chain to really engage and, and, and tighten up when you need it and then push the weight out with acceleration is ideal. Those are all, all points, exactly as you said, those are all points that'll not only help your kettlebell lifting, but directly relate into the speed that you're able to transfer into those movements. And if you think about this type of swing, if we were to regress this type of swing, this swing stems, the hard style swing or like a hinge based swing, stems from a deadlift. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, you can kind of think of it like a dynamic deadlift, maybe not so much, but it stems back from a deadlift. And if we're looking at the implement that we're using, one of the really nice things about a kettlebell is just the way the bell is constructed because you can't obviously swing a barbell through your legs. No. But the fact that it's more narrow, you can feed it through the legs, you can really almost mimic the exact same pattern of the body, of the way the posterior chain is loaded, and you can do so very powerfully. Yeah, and it feels too, and I know with uh, the barbell, you, your weight loading is on the outside of your body, so if there's any sort of a shift uh, as far as like one side versus the other, mm. I tend to notice a little bit of uh, a safety issue there, right? If somebody isn't like grounded specifically, it's more uh, the, as far as like what's gonna happen to you, the, uh, uh, you know, more potential harm is gonna come to you if you don't really nail that technique versus I feel the, the kettlebell has a nice advantage in that aspect where you can keep it, the load, real centric to your body. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. And, and then I was just thinking one extra thing that I think would be really valuable to add to this segment is as it relates to powerlifting, 
you know, there's huge benefit to going heavier on swings, right? But there's gonna be, if we're trying to, to make sure that we're having the utmost expression of power, you kinda wanna find that balance. I think for me, personally, like I can, I can definitely express more speed, obviously, the lighter the bell is. Mm -hmm. So usually for me, like if I'm trying to be as powerful as possible, I might choose like a 16 or a 20 kilo bell, but then I'll also swing with 32s, 40s, double 40s, but what you're really on all the type of swings, you're trying to make it as fast as possible, make sure the speed does not reduce, you keep the repetitions fairly low, maybe 10 and below, because the longer that you go, you're not gonna be training any more fast twitch muscle fibers. Mm -hmm. What we wanna do is we wanna keep that duration low, make sure we're training that system and not so much endurance muscles uh, or endurance fibers um, on the swing. So really when you're just focusing on speed, you're kinda of keeping the weight pretty reasonably low and manageable for the most part. Yep, not, not that there's not a place for heavy weights, but sure. if we're looking speed, we're looking for something that you can do very fast and very efficiently. Okay, which is something that we're definitely trying to apply into powerlifting, so that's great advice. So there you go, there's another way that you can kind of implement kettlebells, even if you're a powerlifter, there's a lot of benefit to that. Uh, so go ahead and look into that. Go ahead and also look into our KB4A program that uh, Mike uh, was able to come and help us out with as well in the skills portion. Um, and that's available to you as well as our 30 days of coaching we provide absolutely free.